I'm out the back of a very social but relaxing weekend. I feel very re-energized, ready for the week ahead. I've currently just brought myself down into one of the bottom bedrooms. I don't normally come down here, but it's really noisy in the garden. The garden renovations are in full swing. It's going very well, um, but they are a little bit noisy today. So I wanted to sit down because I had a very slow start on Saturday. I enjoyed a coffee in bed and also a film that's gonna be coming to Sky very soon. And as part of my ongoing collaboration with Sky Cinema, club i'm reviewing the lost city which comes to our screens on the 28th of october and i just thought it was absolutely fantastic it was a lovely way to spend my day and also just one of those films that i feel like you could sit down with your family your friends your partner and everybody's enjoying this film it's like a proper people pleaser so it has quite a star-studded cast with sandra bullock channing tatum Daniel Radcliffe and also a little cameo from Brad Pitt. Now I'd say that this film is like an adventure with a little bit of action and comedy um, and romance I guess in it as well and so it kind of took me back a little bit to those kind of like early 2000 kind of films but don't be mistaken it's punching that Hollywood production and I felt like the chemistry within the cast was absolutely brilliant so the kind of synopsis of the film is Sandra Bullock plays a novelist who is basically going on tour to promote her book and Channing Tatum, who plays a character called Alan, is the cover model of this book. Now, if you're a Channing Tatum fan, he won't disappoint in this film. He will deliver you exactly what you want. And essentially, Sandra Bullock's novel is about a lost city and so she's kidnapped by Daniel Radcliffe, who's playing quite a wealthy, eccentric character and he takes her to this paradise island to try to discover the lost city. And in the doing of this, Channing Tatum wants to be seen in her eyes as more than just a cover model. So he then adventures out and tries to save her. And within that, we have a little cameo, as I mentioned, from Brad Pitt. I won't obviously give you the ending of the film, but it was, uh, it was enjoyable. So as always, I'll leave the link to the trailer for that in my description box below. And I'd love to hear what you think, but make sure you add that to your playlist if you're on Sky Glass or if not, put a little reminder on your phone to watch that because it's coming out on the 28th of October. Now, there are also some other films that came out this month, but it's also the month of Halloween. And so Guy have put together a Halloween collection pop-up, which includes films like The Quiet Place 2 and Scream. So again, if you want to watch something a little bit more seasonal, then make sure you check that out. And talking of seasonal, I guess Studio 666, which is the film that has the Foo Fighters in, that definitely can fall under a Halloween kind of horror film. So if you're into gory horrors, then I'll also leave the link down in my description box for you to check that out as well. But be warned, it is quite gory. There's lots going on on Sky this month, so do make sure you guys check that out. But I was gonna do an unboxing, however, I have some other work commitments that have arisen this morning that I'm gonna take care of. So going to get busy doing those, and then we're gonna jump into my unboxing probably tomorrow morning when I get a little bit of time to do so. I visited House of Brewer, Ralph Lauren and Soup Supply. So we've got a little bit to go through. It shouldn't take too long, but before I start showing you in person what I picked up, there are some items that I haven't got with me today. So in my last video, you will know that I went down to London and I visited Ralph Lauren's flagship store. Whilst I was there, I actually selected a jacket and a suit that I ordered. And part of the service that they offer is that they actually tailor the garment for you, which means that you won't be able to walk away with it straight away, but what you will end up with is a much better fitting item. The suit that I selected was the pleated plaid Shetland wool suit, which I'll stitch just here for you to take a look at. I'm not exactly sure on the lead time on how long it takes to come back to me. They did mention, but I can't remember what they said, but it wasn't anything too drastic. I think maybe like a couple of weeks and it will be delivered straight to my house. The second item that I picked up wasn't a suit, but it was a blazer, and it's part of their new collection, I believe, and it's their herringbone jacket. It has patch pockets on it, and it's got quite an exaggerated lapel. I really like the style. I feel like it will be integrated into my wardrobe really well, particularly in the autumn winter months, and so I could not resist but to pick that up as well. So that is the jacket that you can see here. And then the other items that I picked up from Ralph were, Grab this little bag. This was an item that I'd seen online and I nearly ordered it, but I thought I just want to go in store because I don't actually know what size belt I am. And this is something that I still haven't got my head around. 
I'm a 30 inch waist, but I wear a size 36. So I'm not sure exactly how they do their measurements, but um, I would have thought that a 30 inch would be a size 30 and a 32 or 32, but that's not the case. So as you can see, it's got this really lovely gold buckle on it and brown leather strap. It's got a really nice, soft, smooth finish to it. I actually wouldn't mind if this got a little bit more distressed, a bit battered, a bit scratched, aged a little bit. I think it'll look really, really nice when that's the case. I'll probably wear this a lot more with slightly more formal clothes. I think if I was gonna go for a belt for casual, they do a really nice woven handmade belt actually, um, which is slightly thinner, definitely a lot thicker. It's also in a brown and a black. So I'd probably say that that would have been a belt more suited to jeans and this is a belt that's probably more suited to slightly more formal trousers. So very happy I selected that. You can see just a close detail. It's just nice and subtle. Next item that I picked up. Recently I did a get ready with me over on TikTok and I referenced that I didn't have a preppy tie for the polo at the guards club. And so I decided to select you can get it out. This navy and red university tie. So as you can see, it has the shields with the red lining down it. I just thought that this had a really nice sort of preppy feel to it. It's gonna look lovely with that navy Dries Van Noten blazer I have with the gold buckle. So this tie is gonna come in very handy for those kind of occasions. I've actually also ordered a couple more ties from Ralph Lauren, which I'll share with you when they arrive. They've got a fantastic collection of ties and uh, they come in just under a hundred pound. Then there's two more items today. The first one is this cardi that you can see here. It's what I showed you in store. So I don't need to go too much into detail with this. And of course, the cashmere cardigan that I also showed you that I tried in, in store as well. And so these are gonna work really nicely as a layering tool throughout the winter months. I'll be able to wear a shirt and a jacket over the top of this, but this will also work really nicely just to chuck on a standalone. And so I think that these are gonna be quite versatile and it's been a while since I've worn cardigans. I feel like they are very timeless. These sort of items never really come or go out of fashion, which is something that's important to me and my focus on my wardrobe. A nice, good quality cashmere cardigan, I think is gonna go down very well. Now moving on to suit supply. Again, I don't have all of the items. One of the items that I'm waiting to be delivered to the house uh, because they didn't have my size in store is this field jacket. I believe it's in a flannel material. I love the color green of it. I felt like it'd be a really nice addition to my wardrobe for when I want to dress in a smart, casual manner. So it would be a jacket that I would wear instead of wearing a blazer. I actually have a very similar one that I'm gonna share with you in a second in a navy. But in suit supply, I basically picked up knits, which is something that I'm just trying to add to my wardrobe as we speak. So I still have a few more pieces that I'd like to get, just color variations. But there's this really stunning hazel color that they do in suit supply and I wish they did it in like the long sleeve knitted polo but at the moment they've just got it in this roll neck and I think a cable knit and they also have an overcoat. This is just a standard roll neck which it's got quite a nice slim fit to it. I found that the medium which is what I'd normally wear was a little bit tight on my Adam's apple so I actually sized up and went for a large. It all fits me still quite nicely because they are quite tailored clothes. Slightly more baggier around the waistline but it wasn't so bad that I didn't buy it. I then picked up Two items that I felt like would work really nicely when I'm dressing smart casual. This is a long sleeved polo in a nice cream color. The fabric's got a really nice texture to it. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but you can see it's very cashmere like. I don't actually know what the material of this is. So it says that this is 70% wool, 30% cashmere, which would explain that texture. It's nice and soft. The fit of it is not as tailored as some of their other knits around the waist, it can be a little bit loose. What I particularly liked about this is the neckline. It's almost like they've created a slight raise. And so when you're wearing it, it feels like you're slightly more pronounced around the neckline, which I really like. I think that it makes me feel like my posture's better. It makes me feel a bit taller and a bit bigger. Um, and so it's just a subtle detail that I think they've added, like really minor, but it just works really nicely and it kind of just elevates that neckline a little bit. A wool mixed knit that I picked up. And then lastly, again, this is a buttonless 
uh, polo styled shirt with a nice rib detailing down it. So you can see if I come closely, it's got a nice ribbing to it, a nice finish. And this was purchased for me to wear around the house and when I'm at work in the office. So they're the three knits that I picked up from Soup Supply. This is a really nice safari jacket. I think I called them field jackets earlier. I meant safari. You see they've got the belt around the front, which you can either tie up and cinch in your waist or you can wear it loose and connected in the back. It's got these two bellow pockets down the bottom and on the chest up here as well. Again, this is gonna be a great alternative to wearing a blazer. Uh, I just think that they're nice, smart jackets that you don't feel like overdressed in. So if you're ever going out, you don't wanna feel like you're making too much of an effort. These are a nice blend between the two. So I'm pleased to have this added to my wardrobe because I only have two of these. I've got a linen one, which I picked up from Onslow. And then I have a white one that I created with Sustran Hicks. So I'm now gonna have four and I'm gonna have a green, a beige, a white, and a navy. So I've got a nice collection of safari jackets building up in my wardrobe. Now we're on to the House of Brewer. So House of Brewer actually contacted Lydia recently and asked her to ask me to select a couple of items. So I went online and I've seen some beautiful pieces that I have ordered, but I got carried away and I was like, I just want to order some more stuff. So I've gone on and placed my own order, which is what the items are in this box. And then when the items arrive that they're gonna be sending out, I'll also share those with you. But these are just some items that I picked up that I wanted now. So a little bit of impatience, but I got a bit carried away. So we have another tie. This is their Saxony Tweed, which is in like a nice rust color and it's got just a slight orange detailing, as you can see down the front of it, which will tie in perfectly with my orange Sustran Hicks deconstructed jacket that you've probably seen over on either my Instagram or my TikTok at some stage. So another tie, you can see a pattern reoccurring here. I'm lacking in the tie department. And then, Again, I wanted to add some items for when I'm working around the house. And so I've gone for this Moss full zipped knit, which has got a nice leather bounded zip to it here, which is really lovely. A rib detailing around the collar, which will be slightly more pronounced. And as you can see, a nice stretch to it. It's 100% lamb's wool. It's just got a really loose stitch to it, which means that this will breathe, but it will also be nice and warm. I'm hoping that this is gonna fit. This will be a nice little item to wear around the house. This item looks like it might be a little bit too big, but we'll have to wait and see when we try it on. This is a safari shirt. So I do have a safari shirt already in my wardrobe. It's a slightly lighter color green. You may have seen it. I think it was from Reese in their autumn, winter or spring, summer. 2019 so it's a little bit old now but it's still absolutely fine but i saw this online and i quite liked the deeper color it's got some nice horn buttons on it in the brown and i think that this will work really nicely in autumn because it's just a thicker fabric it's going to keep me warmer so this is the safari overshirt and then perhaps an unexpected item <laughs> picked up some slippers that I could wear outside around the house because I often find myself traveling in and out of the house, grabbing stuff from the shed, etc., etc. And the Ugg slippers that I have on here, you'll see they've got a really smooth bottom to them. And I noticed that these ones have got a nice ribbed bottom. And what I find in the winter, and it has nearly taken me out a few times, where our paving is quite smooth out the front of our house and it rains, I slip and there's been a couple of times, I don't actually think I've ever slipped over, but I have slipped and like jarred my neck or my leg, um, trying to keep myself up. And so I've been looking for a pair of slippers that have had a rib bottom, and I did actually pick some up from uh, Dunhill, and they lasted all of five minutes. They weren't the best of quality. I picked them up from Amazon. And so I saw these on House of Brew, and I thought, Do you know what, I actually quite like the toe. Um, they've got the fleece lining as well, which is nice because it keeps you nice and warm as well as being very comfortable. So I've picked up these slippers, which are gonna be my in to outdoor slippers. 
I still might continue my search and buy some Birkenstocks or something to go outdoors or something just a little bit more convenient that's a bit more hard wearing if I actually want to go out and do something more practical because obviously these wouldn't be too convenient if I was to start doing small elements of gardening or little DIY jobs. These are more for like when I just want to quickly pop outside, grab some wood to fill up the log storage, that kind of thing. That is what these have been purchased for. So they're a bit more of like a practical purchase for me but I think they look really nice and um, I'll be trying them on in a second to make sure they fit. So that compiles my unboxing. How long have we been going for? 20 minutes. Let's see what I can cut this down to. Hopefully I can cut it in half because I know that these things can go on quite long. I'll leave the three companies that I purchased these items from in the description box down below if you want to link across to those. But I am going to continue with the rest of my day and I'll catch up with you very soon. Might even be able to show you what's going on in the garden actually in this video because I haven't really been documenting it and keeping you updated with it. I'm not too sure how much Diddy has been doing, but there's been some fantastic progress. We're starting to really see the landscape and how things are being laid out in the garden now. So you're starting to get a feel for what it is that we're working towards. There's still loads to do. I would say that we're probably around about 30% into the project, but um, it's moving on really well. The lads are working incredibly well as well. So hopefully it will all be okay and I won't spoil one of Lydia's videos by giving you a quick uh, run around and showing you what's going on at the moment in the garden. Anyway, I'm gonna be continuing with my day and so I'll be picking back up with you very soon. Well, as promised, a garden update. You can see they started to put the sand down on the paths and we have the posts in ready for the bell lights to be installed on. They've also been working on the lower patio down here, which just needs grouting now and a few more tiles putting in. Just underneath where the kitchen unit's gonna go, the wood fire pizza oven is almost complete as well. It's looking insane. And they've started to level up the land just around the outside of the outdoor kitchen. And if we take a look at the steps, you'll see that we now have steps that are connecting the upper and lower patio sections or terrace. Flower beds are in situ. One, two, three, four. We've got some really nice stuff going in those. And down this side as well. The guys are soon gonna come along and install a light well cover over the basement um, gym. The rosebush beds have been replaced with these nice chunky oak posts. The gate is currently being made for this section over here. We'll chamfer off the edges, just whack them with a belt, and then we're gonna have a metal archway that will be installed just here. We initially had three, but when you stand here, you get this lovely view of the secret door. And so we thought, you know what? Let's not put three in. Let's keep that view because that's quite special. And just have the singular archway in. What else is there going on? We've obviously got the coping stones. You can see there's one just on the edge of the wall here. Are hopefully going to be installed maybe at the back end of this week. I don't sure quite when the delivery date is to be fair. They are on order. And then this is the sink that's gonna be going in the outdoor kitchen. And this is the kitchen finished details. So we've got the handle and the finished wood and everything that's been decided. So it is all go. The guys have been working incredibly hard. You'll see that the building materials are slowly being windled down. The furniture will be making its way back onto the patio very soon. We just need to put a sealant down on this just to give it a little bit of protection. I think that's what this patch that you can see here is. They probably just put a little bit down earlier. So it will give a slightly darker tone to the finished patio. It isn't actually as light as what you can see. They've been doing lots of cutting today and it's created lots of dust. And so what you're actually looking at is partly the acid wash that they put on it, but also probably dust from the cutting. So we're really happy with how this is looking and they've done a fantastic job. We then have a little bit of work that's going on. We're gonna be removing the speakers and putting some nice lantern lights up on the walls. We're gonna be putting the speakers into the beds. We're gonna get the Sonos wireless uh, speakers, I think. And yeah, that is what's been going down. So stay tuned on Lydia's channel for more garden updates and you'll hopefully see this looking finished in no time at all. The smell. He's rolled in poo again, hasn't he? Yeah, the right. second time, my little boy. Second time. You can see it all over your chest. Off, 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 off. When you do your little bouncy legs like that, I know what's coming. <laughs> he honestly stinks. Is it just Barkley? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Porter doesn't, I don't think that Porter actually rolls in things. No, you're far too... Um, distinguished. Yes, distinguished. <laughs> you, like he hates baths. He absolutely hates baths. You don't even like the smell on you. He's been rubbing himself on this. The... You are just disgusting. 
Gross boy. And he hates baths. I don't understand how he hasn't made the connection yet. <laughs> Maybe he grumpy still skin. Just, he's a bit bloody. Wash bodily, he stinks. <laughs> at you. It all shows up as well. Yeah. Dirty little boy. It's right. the smell. Oh. Okay, come on then. Get you in the bath. Shall I run it? This yes, time? please. Welcome to Villa Mora in Portugal. We're here for, I think it's four days of golf. I'm actually on what is probably more of like a personal holiday. Each and every year for the last, I think it's like 50 years, a society has run called the Laggers, which is a group of golfers that are all in the legal sector. So they're all lawyers, whether it's in property or criminal, they all tend to have law firms and they go away each year, sometimes in the UK, sometimes to Spain, sometimes to Portugal, and they play golf. And it's a group that have then passed on down the invitations to their sons, me being one of those people. And so we're gonna be spending the next few days here playing golf in Portugal. The weather's looking fantastic and I've got all of my new golf gear. So I'm feeling ready for a good few days of golf. But just before I got picked up this morning to head to the airport, I thought, you know what? I've been traveling so much recently and I still have some more travel to come. I'm gonna try and squeeze in a gym session and in doing some not that heavy, relatively reasonably weighted shrugs. I think it was about 60 or 70 kilograms. I've actually managed to pull a muscle in my diaphragm. Now I'm not sure if that's technically correct. It's somewhere in my back and when I breathe in particular, like deep breaths, it really puts a lot of sort of like stress and discomfort into my back, just underneath my shoulder blades. And so at the minute, I'm not able to play golf. So I've picked up some ibuprofen and some paracetamol and some creams. I've got DP and I've also got um, cold creams as well. So I brought everything I can. My older brother is actually a trained physio, which is good. But we had a little chat tonight over dinner and we both agreed that it probably wouldn't be best for him to actually just aggravate a potential issue. So I'm going to just rest it as much as I can. I've come back a little bit early this evening uh, to the hotel because everyone's gone out for some drinks. And after dinner, I've just come back because I just want to try and hedge my bets and do what I can to try and get my body into a position where I can actually play golf for the next few days because that is the primary reason why we're here. I'm also extremely tired. I've had four hours sleep last night and the night before that, I was in Venice and I had four hours sleep. So these back-to-back -back trips will certainly take their toll on me. And so I think if I can uh, grab a couple of extra hours in bed, then I'm going to do so. But... Fingers crossed, I managed to get rid of this discomfort and I'm able to play golf here because we're actually not too far from Quinta de Lago. I saw that the North Course, which is what I played on earlier on in the year, isn't too far from here. And so I'm not gonna do a huge amount of vlogging whilst I'm here, but I'm gonna capture some little snippets of what we're getting up to and just not put too much pressure on myself to do too much work whilst I'm here because I am supposed to be taking some time out, but I can't resist. Well, Ollie and I have just come down to the beach. It's looking to be a lovely day. We have just arrived for our first round of golf here in Portugal. Back's feeling a little bit sore, but we're gonna push on through. Father, Daddy G, look at that. That's what we like to see. Beautiful. So we post any of these on um, YouTube? That's why it's YouTube, mate. Everybody, say hello to Mark, the main man. <laughs> That's an amazing shot. Ali, that's amazing. <laughs> Come at me. 
<laughs> well done, mate. The right line, weren't it? Yeah. Take that, laid it up. Oh. Yeah. So we came from here, just there. And that's where we finished up. Pace looks good. It's really good. Get in, get in. Oh, that's very impressive. Well, I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't film that part, but I just sunk it for a birdie. Did, did indeed. And I think that's possibly the best birdie I've ever had from what was a pretty awful tee shot. I hit two four irons and a putt to get a birdie on the par four. So hopefully we'll start rolling in some uh, golf. Absolutely mate, although well, there's all sorts in there by the looks of it. It's day two, we are just about to play the Victoria course. Make our way to the changing rooms. Well, I think this has to be one of my uh, favourite views of the course so far. A lovely vista of the uh, hills in the background. Some really large bunkers here. Some nice water features as well going on. So far, lovely day. Best golf I've ever played. I have my lowest score to date. Campo just teeing off now on the 15th, I think. Looks like a bad time, if ever I've seen one. Wouldn't have been a happy greenskeeper today, I'm sure. A little bit scary and a little bit wet. For the old driver. Oh, it's only you drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brian, Brian and... Day three of the laggers with Marky Boy. We are playing the front nine here. What course is this, mate? Millennium. The Millennium course. So the front nine's very Parkland, as you can see. And then the back nine gets a little bit more like Laguna, which was the first course we played on the other day. Beautiful blue skies. So we cannot complain. So this property just sitting on the side of the golf course. Not a bad little spot. Some more real estate here on the course. We've got three laggers finishing off on a par three here. The fifth hole on the Millennium course. Mr. Sharma just about to take his 20 foot putt. But it's our last evening here in Portugal and we're finishing off with a night on the town but it's been an absolute wonderful experience we've got one more game of golf tomorrow before we check out and uh, we're going to enjoy a little bit of food we're on the old course today brother father and brian it's been the nicest course that we've uh, played on since being here
Get out of the bunker. Yep, sit. Yep, that's fine. I've arrived back home from Portugal with the one and only President's Cup. I managed to uh, take the title and this was a accumulated score across three days on straight play. Um, I won't get into straight play on here, but it's basically a point system that we use in golf to try to create a more fairer playing field. There are some golfers that play off of, say, eight shots. There are some that will be playing off of 28. And so to ensure that there's a nice, healthy amount of competition on the ground, we play straight play. And um, I was playing off of a handicap of 20 on day one. I think I went around 14 over. So I got in a lot of trouble because it doesn't go down well when you score high points in straight play because everybody thinks that you're up to no good. Uh, fortunately, a lot of the players that were playing with me have played with me many times before and they know that that was a personal best for me. I've never shot that low before. So I took those points from day one and then they docked me four shots and my handicap went down. So I was playing off 16 for the remainder of the days that we were out there playing golf, which was two more tournaments. And um, I managed to score enough points still to uh, take the win. So very good golf for me, for my standards, not in terms of was it good golf, like absolutely not, but for my handicap and for my play, I played really well. So I'm very happy to have brought the uh, silverware home and I now need to go and take that to get engraved. But it was just lovely to be out there, spend time with my dad, see my brother. We had a really nice time out there with the rest of the lads as well. Maybe that injury that I picked up on my back played a part in it because golf is a game of consistency. And one of the biggest issues I think lots of golfers face is the fact that their swing path's inconsistent. Now, with a bad back, I was fearful to over swing. So it meant that my flight path was probably more consistent because I was more rigid and that rigidness created that consistency, which meant that I didn't find myself in that much danger that often because my ball flight was quite consistent. So I think that probably did in a roundabout way help with my play. So anyway, we're back and we're gonna be hitting the ground running. There's lots of stuff going on at home and at work, which is fantastic. We're gonna be rolling into the festive season very soon. I know we've got Halloween and stuff coming up, but um, it's our favorite time of the year. I'm really enjoying seeing all of the leaves turn on the trees and the colder weather coming in. So I'm gonna wrap this video up. We've got a really cool day tomorrow, actually. We're going to be going to James Purdy Shooting School. So I'm gonna uh, start a new vlog and uh, try and capture a little bit from that experience. So thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, I'll leave the relevant links in the description box down below. I will also see you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. I hope you have a lovely rest of the week. Take care. <laughs>